So for a student like this, I think a semester or two of classes is probably enough. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 266. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week where I get to take questions directly from you over at premedforms.com, specifically the non-traditional pre-med discussion. This podcast is sponsored by Blueprint Prep at blueprintprep.com. Our question today is an interesting one about post classes. Our question asker posted, I finally made my way to the forum. Been following Dr. Gray's podcast for quite some time but don't think I heard this specific question being addressed yet. I'm a non-trad who graduated with BS back in 2012 with a major in biochemistry and three science minors. Since then, I have been involved in basic translational and clinical research. My original plan was to pursue a PhD, but due to a series of unfortunate or fortunate events, I fell in love with medicine and now am on a journey to become a different doctor, an MD. I currently am working full-time as a clinical research coordinator while volunteering both in a hospital and community clinic. I did a free evaluation from the Princeton Medical Admissions Consulting and was told that I need to get an MS or complete a post program to be a competitive applicant since I've been out of school for so long. My undergraduate cumulative GPA was a 369 and science GPA was a 354. I took the MCAT without much studying and got a 500. Planning on retaking it while hitting the books hard around February or March. I feel confident I can score a 508 or above. I really don't want to go back into debt or prolong my pre-med journey, so I started taking classes online for right now, but looking to potentially squeeze in a few in-person next semester at the university from which I graduated. I'll add a caveat to this that the the student wrote in, this is October 2019, so this is pre-COVID that uh, they were asking this question. Does taking one class per semester while working, studying for the MCAT, and doing all other pre-med things, would would that look bad on a post back transcript? Should I take higher science level classes that I haven't taken during undergrad, or should I repeat my prereqs on which I got lower grades? I had one C plus for Orgo 1, all others were Bs and As. For how long is it recommended to take post back classes, and is there a good number at which I should stop? So this is very standard post back type question, especially for a non-traditional student who hasn't taken classes in a while. So what do you do? How many classes do you need? How long should you do it? Which is basically the same thing. How many classes per semester should you take for that course load? Should you repeat classes versus taking new classes, upper division classes that you haven't taken yet? Now, unfortunately, there's no science to any of this. There's no magic formula to nailing your post program perfectly. But here's what I want you to think about. Number one, I agree this student's classes are old, and so they should probably retake some classes or take classes again rather than retake is not the right word. Take some classes again, maybe retake some classes so that they can become a student again, so they can get their science coursework back under their belt to prepare for the MCAT to show the medical schools that they are academically capable of doing well in medical school. The GPA isn't horrible, right? And and if you've listened to me enough, you know that I always talk about that final number, that 369 cumulative GPA, that 354 science GPA. What is that tell me. It doesn't tell me anything. I don't know the story behind those numbers. Is it an upward trend, a downward trend, a flat trend, which isn't a trend, it's just a flat line. What is that number? So I'm interested to know what the story is behind those numbers. Moving on from from that, right? I, I definitely recommend taking more classes. I definitely would recommend taking more than one class. Taking one class at a time doesn't show academic rigor, doesn't show that you are capable of handling the coursework necessary to get through medical school. Medical school won't allow you 
to take one class at a time. So you're going to have to take more than one class. And I understand that with everything going on, it's hard, especially as a non-trad, to add more courses to your plate, but it's what you need to do. For someone like this, who has a decent GPA already, right, a 369 cumulative, 354 science, that's a decent GPA. It's not, oh my gosh, that's outstanding, but it's decent. And again, if there's an upward trend, it makes it even better. So for a student like this, I think a semester or two of classes is probably enough, assuming you're getting as close to a 4.0 as possible. Now, in terms of retaking classes, the typical recommendation is obviously retaking classes where you received a C minus or lower. That typically is not considered quote unquote passing for medical school. It doesn't sound like this student has any of those classes. And so do you need to retake anything or do you just go and take upper division classes? For the one C plus and Orgo one, maybe potentially retaking that depending on if you consider your foundation solid enough to move forward. How did you do in Orgo 2? How did you do in biochemistry? I'm assuming you did decent in those because you said all others were Bs and As. So for a student like this, I would probably just move forward, move on and take upper division classes so that you can continue to show academic success, that you are capable of doing well in medical school by, by continuing to take more and more rigorous courses, right? Upper division courses are supposed to be more rigorous than lower division courses, right? The 400 level class is gonna be harder than the 100 level class. At least that's the way it's supposed to be. And so if you are just retaking classes, you're not showing any growth. You're just showing that you retook your A's and B's and that doesn't do anything. So going and retaking those those classes where you've already received decent grades doesn't really do much other than shows that you can continue to do well in the classes that you already did well in. So upper division classes, great. Take more than one class at a time so that you can do that. And then probably a semester or two to show that um, you can have that upward trend for a while and then get ready and apply. So Congrats on the success so far. Uh, continue moving forward. And hopefully for all of you who are listening to this or watching this, you can learn something about your journey from this episode and hopefully put it to good use for your journey to get into medical school. Part of that journey is taking the MCAT. This student talked about scoring a 500 without even practicing, which is great with that confident of, of being confident scoring a 500, 508 and above, which is amazing. Let Blueprint Prep help you on your journey by going to blueprintprep.com and signing up for a free diagnostic. If you haven't taken a diagnostic test yet and you're within a year of taking the MCAT, I would recommend you go take that now, the diagnostic is a half-length test, and when you sign up for that half-length with Blueprint, you also get access to their full-length number one. Blueprint is the best third-party exam creator out there. Uh, the AAMC is the best. Blueprint is right behind them in terms of quality of exams to match the rigor of the real MCAT, to match the score prediction of the real MCAT. And Blueprint has 10 exams that you can purchase, but you get one for free by going and signing up at blueprintprep.com. You get the half-length diagnostic, full-length one, as well as access to their amazing online schedule tool. Put in a couple pieces of detail and you have your schedule right there for you so you know how to get the score that you're looking for. Again, go check out blueprintprep.com today. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.